Okay friends, to get started on our job, one of the first things we have to do is remove all five of our lug nuts and then remove the wheel. Now with the wheel off, we have a nice clear view of our front caliper. Obviously when we're replacing this, there's going to be fluid located inside of it. There's also going to be fluid coming through the brake hose that leads to it. We need to restrict that fluid. Just going to carefully pinch this off, being careful not to damage the flex hose in any way. And at this point, we can start removing the caliper. On the back side of the caliper, you can see the banjo bolt. That's the bolt that holds the flex hose to the caliper. Let's go ahead and break that free. There we are. And now pretty much just bottom it out. The reason why we just snugged this up a little bit is because we're going to be removing the caliper bracket bolts right here. And if we were to leave the banjo bolt loose and cause vibration, it could potentially splash and break fluid out and get in our eyes. Let's remove these two caliper bracket bolts. Leave that one in just a couple threads. Now with this loose, we can go ahead and remove this. Just keep in mind, brake fluid will come out, so make sure you have your collection bucket underneath the area. Remove your flex hose from the caliper. We'll let that sit here, and now we can remove the caliper from the car. At this point, you want to empty out the caliper into your collection bucket. We can remove the pads and inspect them. If they look like they're good like these ones right here, of course you can reuse them. Once you've removed the pads and you've completely drained out your caliper, just take the plug from your new caliper and slide it right in here. Okay, so now that that old caliper is off, the next thing that we need to do is start preparing our brand new caliper. To do that, we're just going to go ahead and turn this around so you can see it, and we're going to remove both of our caliper slider bolts. At this point, we can separate the caliper and we'll set this part aside. The next thing we're going to do is remove our caliper sliders. When we do this, we want to be very careful not to damage the rubber boot. Grab onto that. Pop this one out. Now for me personally, I typically like to add a little bit of caliper grease to this. Generally, it will come with a little bit of grease in there, but the more the merrier if you ask me. Also take a little bit of that caliper grease and we're going to come right up along this lip right here. Now we can take that slider pin and we're just going to slide it right on in here. Push it so the boot sits over the lip. You want to make sure it's completely over. Okay, once you have it over, just go ahead and give it a nice little wiggle. We want to ensure that the grease makes its way around all over inside there. And then we're going to do the same thing to the other side. Alright, now that we have our caliper sliders lubricated, let's take a little bit of that caliper grease and we're just going to go along each of these four corners. When you do this, you don't want to leave a big old glob, just enough to keep moisture away from this area. Once you have all these areas coated, let's continue on with our caliper tins. When you look at these, you're going to see that you have two different types of tins. Essentially, when you look at the back side of them, they're going to have flippy-doos that are on one side or the other. Now, when we do this, we want to have one that has the flippy-doo facing out and away on this side. Let's push that right on there. And then, of course, we'll do the other one with the flippy-doo facing out and away on the opposite side. Now if you were to look inside here, you can tell where the rotor is going to ride, there isn't anything sticking out into the center area. If I put these in backwards, you're going to have this thing right here facing towards the rotor and you might potentially have noise. Once you have all four corners done, we're going to continue on to these right here. Now these tins, what you're going to notice is they have little locking tabs on them right along here. So we're just going to take this, I'm going to put it into the center area, reach in through the center like this, and I'm going to press it up as far as it can go. Make sure it's locked in, and it definitely won't fall off. Do the same to the other one. All right, we have all of our tins on there. We lubricated our sliders. Now at this point, we can set this part aside, and we're going to continue on to the muscle part of the caliper. Now for this part, we're going to continue with our caliper grease, and I just want to go around this main part of the piston itself, just the metal right here. Once we have that lubricated, we're going to continue on to each of these two ears right here. Now adding this grease right along this area is going to help with vibration dampening and noise reduction overall, and it really doesn't make any sense to put grease anyplace else aside from where I showed you. Now at this point, we can go ahead and remount our caliper bracket here. When we put in our bolts, I like to use a little bit of red thread locker. Once they're bolts started, we'll go ahead and snug them up, and then we'll torque them to 66 foot-pounds. <laughs>
Now it's going to be time to install our brake pads. When you do it, you of course want to have your brake wear indicator on the inside pad and I like to have it facing down. Once your pads are in, just double check your tins, make sure they're sitting properly and they haven't come loose. Now let's install these pieces right here. They just slide right into the holes that are on the pads. Just keep in mind, once you have it in there, it's going to try to spread the pads apart. So you need to hold the pads together. Now we can take our caliper and we'll slide it right over this. Grab your two caliper slider bolts. Once again, I like to use some red thread locker. We'll start these in. Snug them up and then torque them to 20 foot pounds. Now when you try to torque this, you might notice that the slider spins on you. Just go ahead and hold it with some pliers or the corresponding wrench. <coughs> now that we have the caliper mounted, the next thing we want to pay attention to is the flex hose itself. When you look at the flex hose, you might happen to see that it still has the gasket on it. You want to make sure that you get that right off of there. Okay, this one's got a two. We can set these aside. Make sure you clean up this area. Now it's going to be time to install our brand new banjo bolt and of course the new gaskets. To do this, I'm just going to take one gasket, put it right onto that banjo bolt. After that, we can go ahead and grab onto that flex hose and then we'll take the banjo bolt, come through from the outside towards where the caliper is going to be. Take our other new gasket, slide it right on there, and then we can insert this into the caliper. Now we're just going to go ahead and tighten up that banjo bolt. Essentially, we just want to go until it feels like it bottoms out and then we'll give it a little extra. So right there, definitely bottomed out. Give the flex hose a wiggle, make sure it's secure. Remove these. You definitely want to make sure it's tight. If it isn't, it's going to leak. Let's go ahead and remove this boot, set it aside, and then get under the hood. From under the hood on the driver's side, you're going to be able to find your brake master cylinder. This is something that you're going to want to make sure that you check and top off. If the fluid's low, just top it off with some DOT3 brake fluid. Once it's full, we can start bleeding out our caliper. With the master cylinder full, let's just slowly pump up the brake. That's going to help the fluid get down to that caliper so we can start gravity bleeding it. Back down at the caliper, we're just going to go ahead and open up this bleeder screw here. Of course, make sure you have your collection bucket directly underneath this area. Now we'll wait for a steady trickle of fluid to come out without any air bubbles. We'll close it off and then we'll get ready to manually bleed the caliper. Alright, so now that we gravity bled this and we made sure that we had some fluid coming out of it, we're going to continue on with the manual bleed process. This is going to be easiest with two people. Of course, there is a single person bleed procedure, but for us in particular on this video, we're going to have two people. I have somebody inside the car and they're going to carefully and slowly pump up the brake pedal till it feels firm. Once they're doing that, they're going to hold it. Tell me they're holding. I'll open this up and we're going to continue watching and make sure that we have only brake fluid coming out. If you see any air bubbles, we need to continue this process. Go ahead and pump up the brake pedal, please. Now I'm going to close it. Go ahead and pump it again. Now on that last one, you saw that it was mostly a steady trickle of fluid coming out of there, but you did technically see a couple little air bubbles. That tells me that there was still air in the system and we need to make sure we get it all out. Let's go ahead and do it again. Go ahead and pump, please. Go ahead and pump. Go ahead and pump. Now on that last one, you probably saw that there was a steady trickle of fluid with no air bubbles coming out. That doesn't necessarily mean that there isn't any air in the system, so I'm just going to go ahead and do it one more time. If it still looks good, we should be good to go. Go ahead and pump it. Okay, that was perfect. Let's go ahead and clean up our mess and then double check our master cylinder. Install your protective boot. Now we have the car back together, what's left to do? You're going to want to make sure that you go ahead and pump up that brake pedal so it's nice and firm. After that, come under the hood and we're going to go ahead and top off the fluid using DOT3 brake fluid. When you do it, you want to of course come right up to this maximum line right here. Make sure you close your cover nice and tight. Now we can go ahead and put the wheel on here. We'll start all the lug nuts on, snug them up, get the wheel on the ground, and then torque the lug nuts to 98 foot-pounds.
torqued. Okay friends, we got the caliper installed. What's left to do now? Of course you're going to want to jump inside the car and you're going to pump up the brake just to make sure that it's nice and firm. After that, go ahead and take it for a road test. 